So two quick things about, um, about live paint, rotating through the, the colors with the arrows, and then the live paint selection tool. So let you select a specific area and color it that way. Let's see, the other thing I wanted to bring up was layering um, different line work on top of solid areas of color. To do this, the best thing to do is to um, get out of the live paint group. So just for demonstration's sake, I'm going to change this color back to the purple I had before. Um, I'm going to select the live paint group and go to expand. And so this takes it out of the live paint group and allows me to go back and edit the individual um, vector shapes that I've created. And then what I'll usually do is I'll keep the line work on a separate layer. So I'm going to turn off that. So I have the line work in this separate layer and I can work underneath it with the blocks of color and then have turned the line layer back on to see um, how it's going to look once everything's put together. So to get the um, different shading I have or I want to add um, on the dog, I'm going to go um, and create some tints and shades with my palette. So I'm going to duplicate this swatch actually and I'm going to go ahead and adjust it a little bit just so it's a tad bit lighter. So I'm just changing it a little bit and then working in the layer beneath my line work, I'm going to take the new color I've created and using the brush tool, I'm going to change the size a little bit. Using the brush tool, I'm just going to go in and add little areas of highlighting underneath my line work. You can do this with the brush tool. I think the blob tool would probably actually be better because then you're working with um, actual vector objects instead of a bunch of strokes. But you can just start to add little um, areas of highlighting for shading, you do the same type of thing. Um, and since this is, I have this as a global color, if while I'm working I want to adjust the color a little bit, maybe it's too, too different from my um, original color, I can go back into the swatches and adjust the color a little bit. So I'm going to make it a little bit closer to the original so it's a bit more subtle. Same thing with the shading, so a new swatch and make it a bit darker than the original. Take the blob tool, make sure I'm in the right layer. and then start to add some shading. So you can keep layering colors like this if you wanted to make the shift um, a little bit more dramatic or um,
take a color that's even lighter and add that on top, you can do that. So I could take this current color, make it a little bit lighter, and add on color in that way. So you can keep going on and on and on like that. Now, unfortunately, at least to the best of my knowledge, you can't, I don't think you can take um, a brush or a blob and have it already have like a fuzzy edge to it. Um, what you can do is use um, the outer glow effect. So if you go up to your effects palette or your effects menu, um, go down to stylize, You've got options for drop shadow, feathering, which will also soften the edge, um, inner glow, outer glow, etc. So um, I'm going to try the outer glow. And if I click preview, what it's doing is it's putting a little, instead of a drop shadow, it's putting a little glow behind um, the blob. So I could take, do the multiply um, option and choose my color. Maybe increase the opacity a bit and I could adjust that. So it's a little bit of um, differentiation between, um, between the edge and um, what's behind it. I'm also gonna go ahead and try the feather option. So this one should change the edge a little bit so it's not quite as stark. So if I zoom in here, you can you should be able to see the edge on this um, blob is a little bit softer than what's going on right here. So if you're looking for kind of that softer edge, you probably want to use the feather effect. Um, you can also use the drop shadow effect, which let's say I want my line work to look as if it's hovering above my drawing for the other colors. I can select everything in this layer, go to effects, stylize, and drop shadow. And I just have to adjust um, adjust the opacity. And this is something you really have to test printed and they appear on the screen. And you also have to be careful about how much you put a drop shadow on because it's... But that just added a drop shadow um, behind all my line work. Now, if you add an effect to um, anything on your artboard, there's an appearance option that um, you have on the right side. If it doesn't show up, go to Window and Appearance. And here, when you select um, a vector object, it'll show you all the effects that have been applied to it. So let's say I put a, a drop shadow on this one section and I don't want it there. Um, I can just click the eyeball, make it disappear, and it won't show up. Um, or I can click and drag that effects to the trash can and it just deletes it completely. I can also play with the opacity in the appearance um, menu. If I just have whatever object it is selected and click opacity, I can make it more um, transparent. I can also change the blending mode. So if I do multiply, it's going to add together um, the layer or any other colors beneath it. Um, so those are things that you can just play around with and see what happens. 
So the appearance menu is, is pretty helpful. Kind of an easy way to make adjustments. Oh, another thing I wanted to talk about was um, scatter brushes. So with your brushes, you get um, several different types automatically, um, but you can also do something called a scatter brush. And usually what that will do is it'll take a symbol that you have and duplicate it over and over, but in a random fashion. So I'm going to try making a star. I'm going to change the color a little bit. And I'm going to drag it and drop it. Um, Let's see, I think I drag it over to my swatches. So now that it's in my swatches, if I go to um, the brushes menu and create a new brush, I get the option to make a scatter brush. So I've got my, um, my object selected that I made into um, an item on my palette. And so from here, I can change different options so that when it gets put down with the brush, it's more random. So I can have it change size. So I can have it go from 70% to 150%. I can change the spacing, make that random. and so on and so forth. The scatter is how far, um, like how much they're clustered together. Rotation, it'll, um, I can randomize how much it rotates. You can also adjust this if you're using um, the stylus, you can adjust it so it changes with how much pressure you put down onto the tablet. So now I've got a new brush over here. So when I select the brush um, tool, if I draw with it, I get, I still get um, a path that's drawn, but it randomizes a symbol over and over again. So I can play around with that, and let's say I want to go in and actually start to move in and change the colors of these individual shapes. What I would do then is go to Object and go down to Expand Appearance. And so now, just like expanding from Live Trace, it's expanded the original path and lets me go in and select individual pieces. So now I can go into the group and start to move around some of the stars. So the placement is more like I want it. I can also go in and since they're separate vector objects, I can adjust the colors of them. I could add a gradient to them. so on and so forth. Um, and actually, while I'm talking about gradients, I will also say that you can create gradient swatches. So let's say I want to have all of these stars with um, a radial gradient in them. When I have the gradient menu open, if I click and drag it, I can put it over into swatches, and I've already got that swatch in there. So now when I select this group, I could select the gradient from the um, palette and it puts it in to all of those um, objects.
let's see, the last thing I'll talk about um, are gradients and opacity. So I'm going to try this out with the text I have back here. I've got my text in a separate layer. And each one is a separate piece right now. But I'm going to select them. I'm going to make a new gradient. Maybe I'll do... Oops. Going from like a light teal to a darker one. And you'll notice since they were each separate, the gradient is applied separately to every single letter. Um, in order to bring those together, I'm going to select them, go to Object and Expand, and it'll bring up this, just press OK. And now it should be just one shape together, at least it should be. Yeah, so now it's one shape, and let's see if I rotate this to works. Yeah, so now when I go to put a gradient in it, all the gradient is applied in the same way to all of the letters. I can also, with gradients, um, play with opacity. So you'll notice in the gradient menu, if you click on um, one of the little palette boxes with the gradient, there's an option for opacity. I could have um, one section of um, the gradient completely. So I'm going to take this and make it a new swatch. If I apply that to my text, then you can see the bottom part of it fades into the background. And that's all because it's um, if you're going to do that, and let's say I want um, I want it to just fade from the dark teal to completely transparent, what I would do is have both ends at the same color and just have one of the ends fade completely, um, be completely um, transparent. If I do it with another color here at the end, it's still going to blend the two colors together. And so you'll get a little bit of um, the other color in your gradient. So let's say I take this and I have red. It's still going to put in red into the gradient, even though I have the opposite end as transparent. So are there any questions about any of this that I just showed you guys? Are there any other tips and tricks that you've been wondering about that maybe I can demonstrate?